Hello and welcome to the K2 webinar on Smart Actions. My name is Mike Talley and I'm a program manager at K2. So what are Smart Actions? Essentially it's the ability to action tasks via email. This is a fairly significant and powerful addition to the K2 platform because you don't have to rely on getting to your work list or opening up a form in order to take action on a task. You can simply reply to the notification that is sent as part of the process and take action, either a configured action, what the process designer has designed in the, as part of the workflow step, or a standard action such as delegating the, the work list item, redirecting the work list item, or sleeping the work list item. So today I'm going to talk about Smart Actions and give you a feature overview. Then I'll go into a small demo just to give you a taste of how Smart Actions operate. I'll talk about the design time environment of Smart Actions and then give you a, a more in-depth demo and, and uh, discuss some of the more advanced scenarios and, and help and error messages that may come back and be delivered to, to users' inboxes. And then at the end, I'll go over some of the requirements as well as the architecture of Smart Actions. So there are three main roles when talking about Smart Actions. There's the designer role, the runtime participants, and the administrator. The designer role is essentially the process designer who's able to add actions to client events or user tasks and then include those um, actions as well as the standard actions in the notification that is sent out. He or she can also include other information about the client event or user task in that notification that is sent out. And we have the runtime participants, these are the originator and then the, the destination users of the process. So take for example a, an originator who has a leave request which I'll be demoing shortly here. Once that originator starts the leave request, an email is sent to his manager. If his manager is not directly managing him at that time, she can then redirect that task to a project manor, manager who is uh, managing the originator's time and, and leave requests at the moment. And lastly, we have the K2 administrator who can turn smart actions on and off on the server as well as specify which messages are sent back to users and what those messages say. So for this first demo, I'm going to simply show you a notifi notification that comes through as well as a destination user's response. So like I explained earlier, this is a leave request solution and I'm currently logged in as Sean Henderson. So I'm going to add a new leave request. So this is just a vacation for end of year. I'll have a start date of December 27th and an end date of December 30th. So I'll just save that. That's going to kick off our uh, leave request process. Now the first thing that that leave request does is sends a notification and I'll just show you the process right here. It's going to calculate the number of days the person has requested off and get their leave balance from a list in SharePoint. This could be any line of business system. You'll see that Sean here has 21 days of leave saved up. So here's the email that came through. Uh, Rob Joy is Sean's manager, so he's getting this, this uh, notification. And it says, Sean Henderson has requested four days off, and it gives the dates here. Um, they have a leave balance of 21 days. So the option here is to open the work list item or I can respond with, Rob can respond with, one of the following actions, approve, decline, or recalc the leave balance. He can also respond with one of the or standard actions such as redirect, delegate, or sleep. And you'll also notice down here at the bottom in this sort of smaller light gray font that the serial number is included in this, in this message. And that is a, a very important item to have in the, in the body of the email so that the server has context 
for this process, this activity, and this user. So I'm simply going to hit reply. The K2 service mailbox is the mailbox that I set up when I installed Smart Actions to handle all of the processing of messages. So I'm simply going to say, I approve this request and send that off. So what's happening is it's going back to the, the, to the K2 server. The message bus is picking up this message, sending it to the Smart Action server, and that Smart, A Smart Action server is saying, okay, I know who Rob Joy is. Does he have rights to take action on this um, work list item with the serial number 14 underscore 56? And if he does, go ahead and take this action on this user's behalf. So here comes the message back. Let's see what, what happened here. Okay, it said you successfully completed the manager approval event task with the approve action. And that, is, that wraps up demo number one, so let me flip back to my slides here. Now I'd like to take you through the design time experience. So as a process designer, you've probably noticed this allow user to action the task without opening the form. That's what we refer to as a batch actionable um, item. So if you set that check mark, it means that all of your actions above will be batch actionable. It's essentially what, what that means is you can take those actions via the work list or with uh, update 1420 and smart actions, you can take these actions via smart actions. We also have some more contextual information within the context browser that allows you to pull things in like the configured actions of the, of the process or of this step in the process, as well as the standard actions, those redirect, delegate, and sleep actions, and then the work list item serial number. Those items, and this is, this is the K2 designer for SharePoint, those items show up under the work item context in the context browser and if you needed to also include descriptions with your configured actions, you would have to design your process in K2 Studio because K2 Designer for SharePoint, you can simply type in the action names and not the descriptions. But you'll see here that you have the configured actions, standard actions, standard actions with descriptions, the work list item link and serial number, as well as the participant name. Now let's go into demo number two. I'm going to show you the design time, kind of what I just showed you, then do a redirect approval step, um, show you what an error looks like when it comes back from the server, and then a help message. So this is a very simple process for a leave request. It simply has a the originator <clears throat> starts the process, we calculate the days, and we get the leave balance goes to the manager, they can either approve or decline or recalc the leave balance. And if approved, it'll get, uh, the, the originator will get a notification and then we'll go and update that leave balance list. Now I'll step into the manager approval event here and show you that option to allow user to action the task without opening the form. That is key for, for allowing smart actions to work. And if I step through to the notification, it's very similar to what you saw in, in the previous slide where we have the work list item link as a context menu in the green text, the configured actions as a context menu in the green text, standard actions, <coughs> and then down near the bottom the work list item serial number in a smaller, lighter gray font. We also have, uh, just so that there's more information in the email in case it is uh, forwarded or redirected, we have some contextual information about the process. So the originator full name, the number of days they, re they requested off, the start date, the end date, and then their leave balance. So let's go ahead and make another request on Sean's behalf here for New Year's vacation. And he is going to request 
that first week off in January. Save that. And because uh, Rob is his manager, Rob will get the notification. And it says, Sean has requested four days off from the 3rd of January through the 6th. They have a leave balance of 17 days. So before they had a leave balance of 21 days. <clears throat> that was approved, so now it's four days less or 17 days now. Um, but Rob knows that he, Sean's not going to be working directly for him at the beginning of the new year, so he's going to send this off to Hubert and say, because Sean is working for you in January, I'll redirect this request to you. So you notice down below that redirect is one of the standard actions that I can do and I simply put Hubert on the to line and the server will redirect this task list item to Hubert. So let me send this off and because I can't have two, vers two uh, instances of Outlook going at the same time I'll close that one and then open up Hubert's Outlook some of these here <clears throat> okay so now we see this this mail from Rob that says because Sean is working for you in January I'll redirect this request to you so Hubert can simply go in and reply and here's uh, the notification from the service itself and Hubert's just simply getting the same notification that was originally sent to Rob so he can reply to either one of these. I'll just reply to this latest one. And I'll say, decline this request because I need Sean to start the first week. And I'll just go ahead and add Rob Joy to that. So he has some context around if that request was uh, approved or not. So what's happening is because the item was redirected to Hu to Hubert, he now had <coughs> excuse me action rights on that work list item. So the server will will receive that from Hubert, realize that he has action rights, and then he can take the decline action for that vacation request. So that is the redirect scenario. I'm going to go show you one more item here. Let's do another one. Sean's going to request some uh, spring break vacation. Let's see, has that second week off in March. And we'll have to open up Rob's email again here because it's a new request and it's going to be sent to Rob. Here it comes. So Sean Henderson has requested five days off from the 12th of March through the 16th of March. And he has a leave balance of 17 days. So let's say Rob's in a real hurry. He says, OK, I approve this thing, send it off. See some of these other mails that came in here. <clears throat> You'll notice that I intentionally misspelled the word approve. So it's going to come back and say, I didn't, the K2 server doesn't, can't really make that connection between APROVE and APPROVE unless you specifically tell it that APROV is a synonym of approve. So we haven't set that up on the on the server. So it's going to come back and say the K2 server did not understand your response for the work list item. And we list out, you know, the things that you can do, what are the configured actions, the standard actions, and it also says down here, so, you know, uh, 
little information about uh, the date format, and then down in here, you must uh, also ensure that there's a serial number in your task. Well, we know we have a serial number, so let me just show you one more item here, and that's the help. It's going to get sent off, and because it has the serial number at the bottom of this email thread, it will uh, be able to give Rob contextualized help for this step in the process. One more minute here. It's actually polling that K2 service mailbox every minute through Exchange Web Services. Okay, so here you may what we're saying is you may try one of the configured actions or use a standard action, and because this is help, we're going to include the information about how you actually do that. So it says you can redirect to Bob, you can redirect to an email address, or you can simply respond with redirect and specify the target email in the, on the CC line. It also works on the two line. So you can see that you get a little bit more information in help than you did in just the, the error message when the server couldn't understand the response. Okay, I'm going to flip back to my slides here because that ends demo number two. And I showed you the design time, redirecting from Rob to Hubert, and then Hubert actually declining that that uh, request from Sean, and then an error message and the help message. So what requirements do we have for smart actions? Out of the box, we support integration with Exchange 2007 or 2010, and that, that means that the mailbox that you dedicate to smart actions has to be on an Exchange server. That's a requirement because we use the Exchange web services and we pull the dedicated mailbox every minute for any new items that have arrived in that mailbox. For the outbound notification from the process or from, this, from the, uh, the, the responses that the server sends, we obviously need a, some sort of message. That's either a notification or like you saw the confirmation of the action taken, the help or the error, and the serial number in there. Inbound from the user, we need a serial number and an, uh, an action that matches either a configured action in the process or a standard action, or one of the synonyms, like I mentioned earlier. You can have you know, misspellings as synonyms or uh, common things that maybe your users call items like approve or approved or something like that. You need the serial number and help or just simply help, which is uh, on its own not going to give you any context for what sort of actions you can take on that process at that time. And lastly, I wanted to go over the architecture of Smart Actions. Event Bus is a hosted service that's always been in the K2 platform since we released it. We now have, to support Smart Actions, we now have a cousin, so to speak, of the Event Bus called the Message Bus. And in here, the Smart Action server is uh, contained, and inside that Smart Action server are a couple plugins. The Worklist Item plugin, which gives you all the contextualized actions for that uh, item that matches a serial number, and it also performs the actions on the user's behalf. You also have the Help plugin, which gives you that, that kind of rich text help information. And then down below this, you have uh, the Exchange Web Services, which is supported out of the box and custom third-party systems. So you can have custom plugins built on the uh, managed extensibility framework to hook into the message bus and allow more integration with more messaging systems. We'll have a, a knowledge base article on this published uh, soon about how to extend the Smart Action server. So where can you get this? It's actually available now. We recently released uh, update 1420 for K2 Black Pearl and K2 Black Point, and you can just go to the customer and partner portal and download that and install it and start using Smart Actions today. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed the session.